Sorcerers, today I'm joined by Dave, aka Rude, from Archives of the Realm. Dave, thanks so much for making the time to come on here and talk with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I uh, have had an incredible opportunity to meet so many of the community members, and now it's awesome to finally get a chance to connect with you. I know we've uh, kind of talked through Discord, and uh, it's cool to be here having a live uh, discussion. Yeah. Well, I mean, so if people don't know, uh, you have an amazing YouTube channel, Archives of the Realm, which we highly recommend people go check out. Uh, and I know you just had a great interview on there on the yeah. heels of the Courtesan Cup qualifier in West Virginia. Um, fantastic job with that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was so much fun. Uh, so for those of you who haven't uh, had a chance to see my channel before, one of the things that I think is really important and that I love doing is kind of engaging the community, uh, going to different uh, events uh, at different local game stores. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see uh, sorcery as kind of a, a way to help us connect uh, as people, um, in addition to being just a really fun game. So uh, the fact that I was able to travel down to Game Grove uh, to play in the Quarters and Cup qualifier down there and have that interview with Louie and some of the other players there uh, was really, really fun. So let's start at the beginning here. What, you know, how did you first get into Sorcery Contested Realm? Where did your journey begin? And then what prompted you to start making YouTube videos to cover the game? Yeah. So that, that's a great question. Um, so uh, my, my journey to sorcery actually started in 1994. Uh, I was playing another uh, card game and I heard this new kid had moved to my school and I didn't know who he was, uh, but I heard he played this other card game and I said, hey, why don't you come over to my house? I gave him a call and he, he showed up and we started playing cards. And you know, fast forward uh, 30 years in the future uh, and we're still best friends. And uh, when the Kickstarter went live, uh, he had reached out to me because we both kind of share that passion for card games. And I love that like fantasy setting. And he said, oh, look at this new game. Like the art is incredible. It's a lot of the artists that we're used to from when we were younger. Uh, the gameplay looks kind of neat. Why don't you check it out? Uh, so I started to watch some uh, you know, examples of gameplay. I was looking at the cards. And uh, I remember uh, playing my first game on Tabletop Simulator. And I, uh, I had a, a Polar Bears that I pulled out. And I saw the signature in the corner and I'm like, oh my God. And all these memories came rushing back, like Fire Elemental and, you know, all these fun, fun, fun experiences I had when I was younger and I was hooked. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it, it, it's really because of this friendship that I had made decades ago. Uh, and uh, the thing that's really exciting to me is that I'm making more of those friendships now as I kind of travel to different events. Uh, I've gone to four different states to play at this point, uh, probably driven close to 2,800 miles uh, since beta released, uh, just going to different events. And um, it's just been a really cool thing to see that game grow. And the channel was kind of an outgrowth of that. Uh, initially, after the Kickstarter, uh, it was kind of hard to find players locally. And I had found one guy that i become really good friends with, and we were playing a couple times uh, we we're doing a lot of tabletop simulator and then uh, we both kind of decided to try to find a store where we could you know build a community up and engage and uh, found that uh, actually through the the play network and the event finder um and you know when when we were starting up and like i couldn't get enough of the game i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't uh, talk to enough people about it so i just thought hey, let me re record some videos and put that out there and uh you know, everyone in my life has been really supportive of that. It's been really fun uh, being able to showcase just the fun time I have um, and uh, to also uh, elevate the community at the same time and, and take the people that are playing the game and give them a chance to share uh, how excited they are about it. Uh, had you made YouTube content before? Because your stuff's fantastic. No, no. Um, so I hadn't. And that was one of the big hurdles for me. Uh, I think and I'm not a big social media person either, so I don't really use a lot of social media personally. Uh, I did have a, a kind of background in photography as a hobby. So I luckily had uh, some of the camera equipment uh, already that gave me the opportunity to kind of jump into the deep end of the pool. Uh, but what I found, uh, and and this is something I'm not sure if you remember, the first video I made, which was just me opening up the Alpha Preconstructed decks, you were the first comment on that video, um, and and with, within within minutes of it going up, and I like my mind was blown. I'm like, oh my god, like I've watched all these videos with Chase, and like I literally put this video up 15 minutes ago, and he's commenting on it. Like, whoa. <laughs> um, 
Now, how many events have you actually gone to by now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a tough one to keep track of. I actually have a little log book that I bring with me. So anyone that, that sees me at events, I've got like this little book and I use a, a actually have a, a fountain pen that I write with, like to keep track of all my games and all my matches and then any ideas that I come up with. Um, but I do a mix of both uh, of, like official uh, events that I find through the, uh, the play network and then some that I just hear about. So at this point, I think I've gone to 20 events. Um, and, you know, most of those were some form of like formal organized play uh, where you're competing for prizes. Uh, most recently, though, I, I've started to work with some of the folks in my community uh, that, you know, uh, live a little bit closer to me to start building up uh, a play group at a, another local game store that isn't on that event finder. Uh, but it was really cool because last week, uh, Kyle, who was also in the, the video uh, for, for West Virginia, um, you know, he organized a booster draft there. Like he brought product in, he organized the whole thing. And, um, you know, I've, I've really had a blast doing both the really, I don't want to say more, more formal events, but the ones that are kind of more, uh, like run by game stores that are larger tournaments, like the Cortison cup qualifier. Mm -hmm. And then some that are maybe only four people that I'll drive 400 miles for, and I'll hang out with four people. And it's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, and the cool, the cool thing too, uh, is that uh, some of those events uh, and you know a lot of them are, are regionally close by so it gives the opportunity to to meet people and then introduce them to other people so uh, at the Cortison Cup qualifier one of the most fun things for me is that I, I probably had either met or communicated with about five or six people uh, from different events different stores and my, you know my channel and I was able to kind of connect people in person and then actually get to play games. So one of the, the highlights of that event for me was uh, for the top table that uh, was broadcast on the live stream. My opponent, Adam, actually was somebody that I had been talking with on Discord for weeks leading up to the event. And we had played a couple of games and we were both like, yeah, I hope we get to play against each other. And here we are on the, the top table, like going up against each other uh, on this live stream. And it was just so much fun. Um, so, I, you know, I think that uh, I'll only keep doing more. I mean, I'm going to be down in Florida uh, for a two fluence event. Uh, I've seen a yeah. couple pop up in Illinois that I'm really going to do my best to get out to uh, and still continue to try to support the local community, um, which is really important to me. I think it's a, you know, a wonderful thing to have the privilege to be able to, to do that. Um, and I, I think, too, what I'm hoping is that, you know, I mentioned earlier that I think that sorcery, not only is it a fun game, but uh, it's a way to connect with people. Right? Uh, and it, it allows people with similar interests and oftentimes similar backgrounds to go to a third space that's just fun uh, and to start to build like real, true, meaningful relationships and, and friendships. Um, and it can also be a little intimidating, right? When you hear there's this big event going on with 52 people and you're and I think the West Virginia event, I played for 10 hours that day. Like it was a long <laughs> event. I did the formal tournament and then I did a draft afterwards. And, um, and, and I think that can be intimidating for some folks to think about like, wow, there's all these people. I might be going by myself. I don't know anyone. Uh, but I want you to know if you want to go to an event and you see me, just say hi and we'll have a blast. Uh, and, and I think that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, not just playing the game, but connecting. Absolutely. And like I said, you're, you've become kind of a linchpin person in the community where chances are, if someone doesn't know you, they probably know someone who's going to an event yeah. who, has, who does know you. Uh, you know, because you've Sorry. gone to so many events, um, is there a favorite uh, moment or experience or memory you have from one of these events that like really stands out to you? Yeah. So that's, a, I think, a really good question. Um, you know, I have a, a lot of different memories. Uh, some of them are like when... I'm having a really intense game and I might, I might win the tournament. Uh, you know, one of the, the most incredible ones though, is like actually meeting uh, someone in person for the first time. So Josh uh, from the gamblers club and I had been kind of talking back and forth and it turns out he lives probably about three hours from where I'm at. And he told me about a sealed event. Um, and I, that's pretty cool. So he drove like five hours down to this event from a different country too. Like he like crossed an international border to get there. 
And we actually pulled up like right in front of each other in the parking lot at the same time <laughs> and got out. And I like looked at him and he looked at me and I'm like, Hey, and I'd never met him in person, but it was like, we've been friends for years. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, that was probably one of the highlights, but you know, the other thing too, um, you know, is just, uh, down in, in West Virginia, uh, seeing how excited everyone was. Um, that was one of the biggest East Coast events uh, so far. And I wouldn't say that it was like one specific uh, thing that happened, even though my earthquake uh, and root spider, like stealing all of the cores combo was like a gameplay highlight of my entire sorcery career at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the whole event as a whole was just so cool. Like everyone was really, really enjoying themselves. And um, and I think you could, like, it was the feeling of that, uh, you know, I think the term is the zeitgeist, right? It's like the spirit of the times. And like, mm-hmm. when you're in that room with everyone, like you feel like you're just there together, just everyone having fun. Everything that's happening outside those walls doesn't exist. The world isn't going on. You're just two sorcerers shooting spells back and forth of each other, trying to get those kobolds off the map. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I would say that that would be the other thing as well. Like just having the opportunity to, to see that event unfold and to see Louis's genuine passion for the game too. I mean, he's a huge advocate, uh, and to see him lifting that community up, uh, and really making it fun for everyone was really cool. Well, you know, on that idea of like a lifting people up and, and championing things, you know, uh, in many ways, you've been a, a champion for sorcery for quite some time now, right? Mm-hmm. Making YouTube videos, mm-hmm. I think. Put someone automatically into that sort of championing <laughs> category. Um, and I think you've kind of got your, your foot in this other category as well. And something we sort of talk about, uh, this idea of like first followers, right? Where you can have yeah, someone yeah. who's out there championing, who's like putting on events. Um, but that's just one person, right? Uh, and you need right. those other people uh, to come, who be the first followers, the people who show up for yeah. the events, who are there to back these people up. And you are certainly championing sorcery. And, you know, you've been traveling around these events um, really have them be that kind of first follower to help other people uh, yeah. be successful and, and have the people there to play and then doing your interviews to spotlight them. Uh, and I think that's something yeah. I really admire about your content here. Um, Thank you. Do you have any uh, suggestions for people who maybe want to make that step and try and be a first follower and like they're just, they're maybe hesitant to go to an event, like right? they, they're playing yeah. at home on their kitchen table. Any advice are you going to maybe their first event and, and jumping into that role? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a good question, and and one that I even uh, really grappled with at the beginning because, I, you know, I was thinking like, how do I meet new people? Like, I haven't done an organized, uh, you know, card game in a really long time. Like, it had been yeah. decades since I had really played anything yeah. in a game store, uh, and it was a little intimidating. Uh, I thought like, oh man, like I don't know the rules that well. Like, what if I mess up? Um, there's a lot of people there. Are they going to be competitive? And like, is it, is it going to be fun for me? And, you know, I reflected on that and I thought, you know, I'm already not playing the game. I'm already not having fun going to game stores. Why don't I try it out? Like, and see if it's actually enjoyable. And if I don't like it, then I don't have to do it. Uh, so I jumped in and, uh, found that, you know, it was, you know, the exact opposite of all the fears and worries that I had. It was, you know, a welcoming, fun community. And, I, and at this point, I've played with probably well over 100 people in person. Um, and, uh, you know, I have had an incredible experience with every single one of them. Uh, and I've, you know, won some of those games. I've lost some of them. But I think I go into each of those experiences. And I think that, like, I always joke I have, like, my own internal win condition, um, I'm not like a really competitive person at my baseline. I just really like to have fun. Uh, so my win condition is if I can enjoy the game and like have a fun game with, with the person that I'm playing with and mm. get to know them a little bit, then I've won. Right. Like it doesn't matter yeah. if my life total is zero and I get hit, hit on death's right. door and like they lightning bolted me to death. Right. Like if, if the if worst you have thing fun, going on in your life is you lost a game of sorcery, you've got a pretty good right. life. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, I think that if you're thinking about it, uh, and if you're out there like like thinking like I would like to try to play some games, maybe I don't want to do organized play and like join a tournament, but I'd like mm-hmm. to try to play the game in person, uh, hop on the Discord. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to play the game at all and you want to try to learn, we can you know do tabletop sim games. Um, and uh, I think that the other thing is uh, the community from what I've seen and and you know as I mentioned now being to four separate states playing, 
uh, is so welcoming. Uh, every single event I've been to, there have been people that have been playing since pre-alpha and people that have been, you know, just jumping in, you know, within the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, what I've noticed is that regardless of that level of play, you know, it's a supportive thing. It's so phenomenal to me. And, and I'm sure that people have seen it a bit uh, in some of the gameplay videos that have been posted. You know, if you make a play and then you're like, ah, I kind of wish I wanted to put that site over there. Uh, most people are like, yeah, man, go for it. Like yeah. <laughs> we all put, the, we all put the desert in the wrong spot sometimes. So like slide this, slide it on over. Um, so I would say, uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, the pre-cons are a great way to get involved. Uh, you can use the pre-con deck. I think I played for about a month and a half only with the pre-constructed decks because I, I wasn't really sure how to build decks yet, uh, but I knew that I really liked the game and it was fun. Mm-hmm. So I would just bring my pre-constructed decks and I would go up against people who would destroy me with their sharks. Uh, and you know who <laughs> that you are. Uh, <laughs> those sharks, man. They were... <laughs> <laughs> they were like eating up my my militiamen, like and getting pulled in with it's punch butchers, thing. right? And and I had a blast. Oh. Um, and I think you know, if you're interested in it, know that there's a community out there that wants you to have fun, uh, that's welcoming, that that wants you to be able to feel like you can be yourself and be a part of this and really enjoy it, uh, and mm. just enjoy the experience with the community members. So. Um, if you're questioning, that's okay. Uh, try tabletop sim. Uh, if, if you've already played some tabletop sim games, you like it, pick up the pre-cons. Maybe you see if you got a, a friend or two that wants to learn how to play or head down to your local game store. Uh, what I found too, is that even if they aren't hosting events, um, sorcery is such a different looking game. So the mat is incredible. The cards are gorgeous. People will come over and ask you what you're doing. And then you can say, oh, it's, this, it's new games called sorcery. Do you want to learn how to play? I've got a set of four pre-cons here um, and uh, teach them how to do it. So, And one of them's got a pudge butcher. You know? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. One of them has a pudge butcher. The pudge butcher, <laughs> oh, the pudge butcher, man, like that blew my mind. That grapple shot uh, were, were two of the first <laughs> cards that I, I played. And I'm like, whoa, this game is different, right? This game is different. Um, you know, it's not just tap to do one damage. It's, it, the intentional use of language on the cards is so spectacular uh, because when you think about it mechanically, there, there's really not a lot of different mechanics, but the way those mechanics are described using language very intentionally makes it feel like a narrative's unfolding. Um, so, you know, you can easily say, tap the Pudge Butcher and take your minion from your, that square to this square and then do damage mm-hmm. equal to this minion's power. Uh, but instead, you know, it gives you this narrative feel to it. So that's the other thing too. Find cards that you love, find cards that are really fun, try to make a deck out of them and bring that deck with you and, and you know, show it to the world. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things when um, people who are familiar with TCGs see the game being played and things are moving around. Mm-hmm. And just last night, somebody walked by, we're playing it. What game is this? And they're like, wait, they move? You move yep, around? Yep. And I'm like, yeah, yep. yeah, you do. And then- uh, Their mind just got blown when you explained the subterranean yeah. and like underwater levels. Oh, yeah. Wait a second, three dimensions? <laughs> it's, so it's, well, it's cool. Obviously, it's obviously cool. we're fans, but it's so good to hear that other people are fans too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so, that's what I've noticed too, is that people just are interested in it, right? Like they, a lot of times they'll get interested by the art, but then they see the actual game unfolding in the mechanics uh, and like, wow, this is really unique. Well, so, you know, yeah, thank you so much for, for continuing to champion sorcery and mm-hmm. not only um, help spread the good word of the game, but also, you know, help put forth the values and support the community in a way that is when new people are joining, they're seeing like what sorcery is about. Right. And I think yeah. we could probably agree that there's we have a pretty amazing community now with so many people that are, that are so supportive and welcoming. And, you know, thank you for helping nurture and carry that spirit to all the events you go to. Oh, it's my pleasure. And there's no greater honor than being able to be part of a, like a join experience uh, with other people that are just having so much fun too. So I think for me, um, I reflect on all those events and it's funny when you asked earlier, there's like a moment you remember. Uh, I remember more of the interactions with people than like specific games sometimes. Like I'll remember like components of games and like outcomes, like Oh, when I won my, you know, beta champion, right. From the, the, the social kit, like that was awesome. 
the game that led up to that was really intense and it was so cool. And the opponent that I, uh, I was playing against, you know, we became friends uh, and I had gone to that store a couple of times. Uh, but it, it's that connection with people out there. Like I, as we're talking, I'm like reflecting back on all these events and thinking about different interactions with people I've had. And then I see them comment on the videos. I'm like, I know that person, right? Like I've got to, I, like we shared this experience. Like not only are they someone that's watching the video and interacting, but they were there. Like this is something they were part of too. It's just as much for them as it is for me. And I, I think that that's the, the thing I've noticed about all these events is that if you go there, it's just as much your event as, you know, the person that wins first prize. Uh, because you're going to have That's a wonderful time to meet people that are, are pretty unique too. Well, so what can we expect from your channel in the future? Um, what do you got planned? And any other events people might bump into you at? Yeah, so uh, so I'm going to be down in Florida at uh, the event that's being sponsored by Two Fluent. So I look forward to seeing folks down there. I've already communicated with a couple of individuals and uh, know, know some folks that are going down. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I will be also uh, heading out to the uh, the Cortison Cup uh, this summer, uh, so really looking forward to that, and have uh, Gen Con uh, planned too. So uh, nice. I've got those three three big events. Uh, I uh, I also am trying to arrange some smaller uh, experiences. Uh, you know, when I uh, when I think about what I want to do, I want to mix it in, uh, not just highlighting like the the big events, but I think the the kind of lifeblood of the game is you know, the, the person that plays it. And you see that a lot at local game stores uh, that are maybe just running local events. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to try to get an opportunity to find more local game stores that are open to me visiting and maybe uh, getting some content uh, filmed at their events and uh, really trying to highlight the people that champion the game from a store perspective, as well as the players that are playing uh, in those communities. So I think that's uh, one of the big things. Uh, the other thing... You know, uh, I, as I play the game more, uh, I really want to try to help people learn uh, more about how to, like, actually understand the rules, uh, how to build decks. Uh, the the deck building in this game is one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had uh, in a trading card game. Uh, I think, uh, fr from my perspective, uh, it, it's almost like solving a puzzle, right? So uh, it's a puzzle without without a predetermined form, though. So you you think about what you want to do with with your deck right and you know there's a, a mixture and like i see it as a spectrum like fun and functional versus like totally wacky uh versus like <laughs> super super competitive um and you know helping people to see cards differently right so one of the really unique things uh, uh, that i think sorcery has that other games don't as we'd mentioned is that spatial component um mm -hmm. so i i like thinking about the ways that you can use cards alternatively. Um, and what I mean by that is like a card oftentimes will have one clear use, right? Like there's one use for this, bury. You're gonna bury that that Pudge Butcher, right? You're gonna bury it and you're gonna kill it. But what if, you, right? I, I keep going back to the Pudge Butcher. Yeah, you, can't, you can't bury the shark. He's he's unfortunately immune right, to bury. Yeah. Um, but, but what if I bury that Philosopher's Stone? And then I, I steal that with my, uh, you know, cave trolls and I run it back to, to my side. Or uh, what if I teleport my sneak thief uh, and steal your relic and then I teleport it back uh, and now I've got <laughs> something on my side. Uh, other fun things like uh, thinking about geyser, right? I think geyser is a very underutilized card. Um, mm -hmm. so geyser floods the site. It gives the minions they're flying. Andrew draw a card. It's phenomenal. It's got three effects. Um, so what we're seeing is people are thinking about it. Well, I'm going to use that to either give my card flying so it can fly and do something, or I'm going to use it to just draw a card. Uh, what if you flood the site and then you use boil and you kill everything on it? Um, so they've got, you know, these huge minions. You're like, oh no, I can't destroy these. I'm playing a water fire deck. Um, but they're playing earth. So I'm not going to ever be able to use my boil because they don't have any water sites. Um, you know, using it creatively like that uh, or using it to flood a site where there's a burrow there. Um, so I, I think mm -hmm. for me, one of the things I want to do is just find an opportunity uh, and, and also find the time. It's, you know, it's tough finding a lot of time to like make all these videos. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. But find the time to I can't highlight help some you on the of the time those. side, you know. <laughs> so if so anyone... with the, the gay part, you, you find the time <laughs> part. You know, you can... Right, right. If anyone has any tips on time travel, uh, please let me know. I've considered like <laughs> setting up a base on Mars so time would pass differently and then maybe it'd have mm, one day. Oh. Um, but unfortunately, the rent's too high there. So I don't think that's an yep. option at this point. Among um, other challenges there, but what about tall yeah, mountains, right? right? I think it's like this <laughs> slight, slight over lifetime gains you go for, but I right, digress. Right, right. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think for me, um, showcasing how to make some decks uh, that uh, are unique, that use cards differently, uh, that also uh, help people to start thinking creatively about how to pair cards together. Um, and that's something that I'm really excited to do too, because I, I think that one of the beautiful things about this game is the size of the set. Uh, it, it allows for so many different card interactions. Um, I'm, I'm so excited to see what Arthurian legends brings to the table. I like, I'm already brainstorming cards. Like, can you tell me if there's going to be like, any <laughs> chance? And, <laughs> um, well, what's cool is but, that with uh, Arthurian legends, right? Uh, any you mm -hmm. know even a handful of cards can shake things up dramatically yeah and to get like such a yeah. big influx can make things really exciting so i'm, yeah, it's I'm gonna be excited cool. i think the whole team is yeah yeah well it's gonna be cool so i, I think those are things that i want to highlight just uh you know how to make fun decks how to how to play fun decks how to make decks that are maybe more competitive and if you have a deck that you really like but it's not performing well how to really tune that uh, and refine it so that it, it performs to the level you want well, and thank you so much for coming on and talking. Uh, if you haven't yeah. checked out uh, Dave's channel, Archives of the Realm, please make sure to check it out. If you see me out and you're like, is that him? Like, maybe maybe I should go say hi. Yeah, come on. Let's 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 have a blast. We'll we'll play a game. We'll talk. Um, if I'm filming and you want to be part of that, that's great. Uh, you know, I uh, I really like the uh, you know the aspect of championing the community. So. Um, if there's something that you want to share with other people, then I'm happy to help you to do that. So, well, if you have met, uh, rude in, at an event, leave a comment down below and say hi. And, uh, thanks so much for coming on. And in the meantime, everybody, good luck contesting the realm.